the most interesting journey start when you least expect it. I'm putting all my hope in one guy, the owner of this sprawling estate, Jesper Luplinkoff. Someone who's known as much for his innovation as he is for his coffee. That's why his farm survived when no others in the area could. And at first glance, this place looks impressive. Man, I gotta be honest with you. I, I didn't expect the scope and size of this thing. I was kind of expecting a farm in its infancy, but this thing is massive. Well, how is it that like all of America hasn't heard about you? How is it that I don't know about you? We started with coffee in 2000, and then we went really big. We bombed out when we had a drought in 2006. We lost a big part of the plantation, and that's probably why you didn't hear about us. We've learned from our mistakes, and we're on the comeback now. The gadgets and inventions that Jesper has come up with have greatly contributed to this comeback. Like this contraption behind us, something called a cascade dryer. And I've absolutely never seen anything quite like this. Not to get too technical on you, but it's a multi-level drying platform that uses Zambia's low humidity in eight months of annual drought to its advantage. As giant fans blow the dry air across the beans, they spend 24 hours on each level of the cascade until they reach the bottom where they're ready to roast. It's 24 hours of clean air, and then the next day, turned over and brought down. Yeah. It's genius. You're not shocking the coffee. It slowly dries until it's perfect. This cascade could be coffee changing. I can't wait to taste that. Let's go cup some coffees, man. Yeah. Jesper's Farm is a state-of-the-art, full-service operation. No field roaster required. There are, what, 17 coffees on this table? Separated by variety. It's all-you-can-eat buffet of beauty. Look at that. The question is, are any of them worthy of being called my anniversary roast? It's time to find out. You ready? I call this little move the slurp and spit. Wine tasters do it all the time. And I do it for the same reason, to have all the flavors of the coffee open up and be able to taste all the complexity of the layers. But you know, when wine tasters do it, it just looks a little more sophisticated for some reason. This is the crazy Zambian style. Mbuni, yeah. Mbuni. It's a coffee cherry that actually dried on the bush. So it's like drying on the vine raisins. Coffee has two problems in doing that anywhere else. One, there's a lot of humidity in the air, and after a while, the berry just gets soft and wants to fall off. Number two is, it's not, it doesn't dry quick enough on the vine, so it rots. But here, because of the air being so dry, you pick it dried. You can't do that anywhere else in the world. For my anniversary roast, I've got two criteria. It's gotta be completely different. The Mamudi checks that one off the list. But it's also gotta taste incredible. I've never tasted something like that before. That's my coffee.